Hello and welcome to this video on how to specify and analyze bifactor measurement models in the M Plus software. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to multivariate statistical methods, including factor analysis, structural equation modeling, multi-level analysis, and latent class analysis. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly newsletter, as well as additional videos and workshops. In this video, I will show you how you can specify a bifactor measurement model in the M Plus software and how to interpret the output for such a model. If you're not yet familiar with bifactor measurement models, then please check out my other video on bifactor models in the description in which I explain the models conceptually. Here in this video, I will focus on the M plus application. So let's take a look at the syntax here. So here, this is already my output window in which the input commands or syntax commands are reproduced. And you can see I have a data file specified here that is named by factor dot dot. This data set contains a number of variables that are listed here in the names list. And then from this names list, I picked nine variables to use in my by factor model. In a bifactor model, or we use a bifactor model typically when we have <clears throat> a multifaceted construct that we're analyzing. So, for example, when people often use this model in intelligence research, when they have special, when they have a, a test battery, for example, that assesses general and specific abilities. So for example, there could be a subscale that measures reasoning ability, another subscale that measures memory performance, for example. And sometimes people try to separate general variants from specific variants using bifactor models. Another application would be latent state trait analysis for longitudinal data when you want to um, extract a time invariant factor or trait factor from time specific factors that reflect situation effects, then you can apply latent state trait models and those can also be specified as a bifactor model. So here in this case, then we would have three facets, the indicators Y11, Y21 and Y31 are three indicators pertaining to the first facet or time point, for example, and then the next three variables pertain to the second facet or time point. And then again, we have three indicators for the last facet. In a bifactor model, we specify a general factor that here is labeled G in the model statement. And so this statement says G is measured by all variables in the use variables list. So the general factor influences all the variables. And so to so say that factor um, accounts for what is shared across all of the variables. And then in addition to that, we have specific factors here labeled as S1 through S3. Those specific factors are residual factors that account for residual associations of the items or indicators that pertain to the same facet or time point. So for example, Y11, Y21 and Y31 all share the same last index for the same facet or time point, and so those have a specific factor or they measure a specific factor S1 in addition to the general factor G. And then likewise, the next three indicators also have loadings on S2, and the last three indicators have loadings on S3. Of importance in a standard bifactor model, the general factor uh, is not correlated with a specific factor. So this, it's, not, it's not allowed to be a correlation. And that's because those residual factors are usually interpreted implicitly or explicitly as residual factors. And so residual factors, that means that they account for something that G does not account for. So those are residual associations between the items of a given facet that G does not reflect. And so therefore, G should not be correlated with S1, S2, or S3 if these factors are to be interpreted as residual specific factors. So therefore, we are setting those correlations to zero. Why do we have to do that explicitly in M plus? Because the default in M plus is that 
all factors can be freely correlated. So all the correlations between uh, factors in a confirmatory factor model in M plus are by default estimated. And so in order to not allow that, we have to um, put in the statement G with S1 through S3 at zero so that the correlations will be fixed to zero and suppressed, so to say. Furthermore, in the model also, we typically do not allow correlations between the specific factors. So those are also uncorrelated with each other. And so therefore, we also have to add a statement that says S1 through S3 with S1 through S3 at zero. So all those correlations are set to zero with this statement. And that's it. So that's all we need to do for this by factor model in the output command I requested sample statistics as well as the standardized solution STDYX where all observed and latent variables are standardized. So let's take a look at the output and see what we get for this model. Input reading terminated normally, that's a good sign and this analysis is based on 300 observations. Let's take a look at the model fit first under model fit information, you can find your chi-square test of model fit and the chi-square test of model fit here shows an excellent fit for this bifactor model. You can see the p-value is 0.6472, so that is a non-significant uh, p-value at an alpha or significance level of 0.05, so the model does not have to be rejected according to the chi-square test of model fit. In the model results section, we obtain the unstandardized parameter estimates first. And so the unstandardized estimates are in some ways a little bit tricky to interpret or maybe not so clear with regard to the factor loadings. And so later on, we'll take a look at the standardized factor loadings as well. So here in particular, it kind of looks like there are some small loadings here. See, this one is only 0.066. However, this has only to do with the metric of the variables where those three items or indicators happen to be in very different metrics with very different units of measurement. And that's the reason why the loadings here look so different. It's not really something to be concerned about. And we'll see later that the standardized loadings are fine and um, does not do not indicate any sort of problem. Also, the, so the general factor loadings are given first. We can see they're all statistically significant according to the two-tailed p-value column. These are all significant at the 0.05 level. Also, the loadings on the specific factors are significant, significantly different from zero, as you can see here. So again, when we look at the standardized factor loadings in a minute, this will become a little bit clearer. You can see that M plus suppressed all the factor correlations that would normally be estimated by default in this model that would cause problems in terms of the interpretation and also in terms of the model identification if we allowed those correlations. And so it's good that they were fixed to zero. And here we can check that that was really the case. Next are the intercepts for the observed variables, which are typically not of the greatest interest. And here you can see that these variables differed strongly in their means. So here the, in this model, the intercepts are simply um, a reproduction of the observed variable means. And so you can see, for example, the first variable here had a mean of about 100, the second one of about 50, and then the last one had a mean of zero. And that's simply because they were in different um, metrics. What is more interesting are the factor variances. You can see that we have a general factor variance here that is estimated and specific factor variances. And what we can see here is that the general factor variance is a lot larger than the specific factor variances. And so that already shows us that in this model, there was more general variance or there was a lot of um, variance that was shared across the three facets, then there was specific variance in each, um, in each of the facets. So let's take a look at the 
at the standardized model results. STDYX again means that this is the completely standardized solution where both the observed and latent variables are standardized to unit variance. And so therefore the, the factor loadings here can now be interpreted as correlations between each variable and the factor. And so that makes it a lot easier to see um, or to understand what the loadings on the general versus specific factors here indicate. When we take a look at the general factor loadings first, you can see that they are all very high between 0.82 and 0.92. So those are strong general factor loadings indicating that there was a strong G factor, so to say, a strong overall maybe ability factor or in the sense of latent state trait theory, a strong trait factor if those were longitudinal or repeated measures um, data. So the G factor clearly had a stronger influence on the measurements here than did the specific factors because here those correlations between the items and the general factor ranged between 0.829 and 0.92 whereas the correlations between the variables and each specific factor were much smaller. You can see here they ranged between about 0.15 and 0.36. So those are much weaker, indicating that specific factors here were not as important as was the general factor. So the general factor accounted for most of the variance in the observed variables and the specific factors only accounted for a smaller portion of the variance, about at most maybe 10%. So if you square those standardized factor loadings, that would give you the R squared contribution for a given variable. And so here the highest value would be then 0.36 squared. And so that would be about roughly 0.10 or so, so 10% of the variance um, at most was due to a specific factor in this example and um, about roughly about 70% of the variance was due to, a gen to the general factor when we look at the squared loadings here. If we squared those then that would be around 0.7-ish and so about 70% was due to um, the general factor for most items or on average and only up to 10% was due to the specific factor. At the very bottom, you can find the overall R squared values for the observed variables. And so those give you the two contributions combined. So what both the general and the specific factor together explain in a given variable. And so for example, for Y11, 88.5% of the variability is due to either the G factor in this model or the specific factor S1. And the remaining uh, 0.115, so the remaining 11.5%, which you find under the standardized residual variances, is measurement error variance. So you can interpret the R squared value here as a reliability um, estimate for that given variable and then this would be this uh, value here would be 1 minus r squared or 1 minus reliability. So only 11.5% of the variance in this variable was error variance whereas 88.5% was true score variance. So this is um, how that's interpreted. The residual variances in the standardized solution give you 1 minus r squared and then here you find R squared or reliability. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about the analysis of bifactor models in the M plus software. If you did then please subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources including other videos and workshops and I'll see you next time.